So let's take shape manipulation and drawing to another layer and incorporate uh, duplication and layers into this. So let's go back into Inkscape. Uh, this is just where we left off in the previous video, which is I have a single shape. And let's go back here to my Layers and Objects tab. And if I click this button right here, it will collapse all my layers or, or expand them, as you can see here. Um, but right now, I only have one layer, and I've got one shape. So this will become a little bit clearer in a second. So first of all, let's talk about duplication. So if I go into my Select tool over here, and I've got this object selected, and I hit Control D, I have now duplicated that object. It's the exact same size in the exact same place. Well, so you have two things exactly on top of each other. They only appear as one. Be careful of this. If you've got duplicate objects like this, to your eye, it looks OK. But Blender, later on, does not like this at all, and it'll throw an error. So make sure if you duplicate an object, like I did here, make sure you move this and manipulate it and changing it into something else or get rid of it all together. But let's just, for now, let's just keep it. Let me duplicate that. So now I have this one object on top. And to make this a little bit more clear, I can go up here to my path. And I can inset that again a couple times. Inset. And let me change the color of it. So now you can see what happened here is I have two objects on top of each other. One is slightly smaller than the other. Now, what I can do here is I can also, if, if I want to look at this object on the bottom, so let's see, I got the top one. So you can see this is the top object or top shape, and I can move it. And now you can really see clearly that this one is on top, right? Now, if I have it highlighted over here in the, in the panel and I hit page down, you can see I've now moved it down from the one on the top. So now it is behind, so path 5399 is underneath path 3085. I can come back here to 3085 and hit page down, and now that one is back on the bottom again. So that is a very important concept of this layering, which is things on top of each other, and understanding that is really important. I can also come to this object on the top, and let's say I, I want to see exactly what's behind it here, but I don't want to move it up or down inside the layers. I can be come back here to my fill, and I can change the opacity so I can see through it. And now you can see as I change that opacity, I can see the shape or shapes that are underneath it much better. When we're done looking, though, we want to make sure that we put that back up to 100%, or else that's going to give us errors later on. Very important. So let's start to complicate things a little bit more. So we have one layer over here. Let me just zoom out. We have one layer over here with two shapes inside of it, two paths. Let me add another layer. I'm going to call it layer two. And let me add it below my current layer. So I add that. So now I have two layers. One layer has two shapes, but layer two has no shapes. So let me highlight layer two, go to my Bezier tool, make sure I'm doing a B spline. And let me just draw a couple more shapes here, closing them out correctly. So I got one shape. I've got another shape. Let me fill that one in. Let me go to my pointer tool, highlight the other shape. And let me fill that in with something very different. So now I've got path 5771, which is on top of 5767, which are in layer two. And layer two is underneath layer one. So if I highlight layer two and I move it up here, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, it's going to be behind layer one. And if I go over here to layer two and I right click and I raise the layer up, it's going to be layer two to the top. And now it's in front of layer one. And I can move it back down. So you can see how that layering and that order is very important and very precise. You might have a situation where you want to move shapes between layers. Um, although you can click and drag, it's problematic. We recommend, and we all we, we recommend that you either one right click on the layer, move to layer, and then select that new layer. So I'm in layer two. I'm going to move this to layer one, 
And now you can see I've moved this path into my layer one path. So it is actually now grouped with these objects and you can see it is on top, okay, of these. And if I hit page down with that highlighted, you can see I start to move it underneath. So it's hidden now. And now I can move it page up, moves it back to the top. One last thing here, which is hiding layers and locking layers. This comes in useful. So I can come over here to the panel and I got these two icons. One is I can hide a layer. So if I want to see what's behind it, this is another method of doing that. I can temporarily hide it. I can hide an entire layer. So there's layer one hidden, there's layer two hidden. And I can also lock layers and shapes. This comes in useful if you absolutely are done with the layer and you don't want to accidentally add something to it or move it. You can lock that layer and now I can't do anything to this. I also cannot, if I come over here and I try to add something, you can see that I have layer one highlighted and I'm clicking like I want to draw, but nothing's happening. So if that ever happens, just make sure you don't have something locked over here. If you're trying to manipulate something, make sure it's not locked. If you lock the layer, it locks everything underneath it. Same thing if you make something invisible, it makes everything underneath it invisible. So comes in useful, but it can also throw you for a loop later on.